All right. First of all, my boo, Queen Jada Jai. Oh. I'm just, I'm in awe. I'm in awe. Listen, <laughs> first of all, how are you? I'm how good. Does it feel? I'm good. It's like every single day is a new challenge. I'm like, I'm, I'm a, a, a slight in the beginning stages, like you're a slave to your schedule. So I'm like trying to get a grasp on everything, but also enjoying life along the way. But I'm good. How does it feel? Ami Kole is it's here. here. It was a vision. It yeah. was a, a thought. It was a dream. And it's it's here. How does it feel? That's such a question. Is this like, oof, how does it feel? It's like, uh, I don't know how to describe it. it. It feels surreal. It feels beautiful. I forget sometimes, you know, like when you're like, when you have so much joy to celebrate, you know, mashallah, you like, you're like going through random days and you're just like, wait a minute, I, I, what, we, we're doing that. We did that. <laughs> so it's, it's sporadic moments that, that really um, get me so excited all over again, but it's a blessing. Um, I know it's also a chosen path. I know it's something that's been given to me through, you know, connections and something way beyond myself. So I always try to ground myself in that thought. So it's been, it's been good. Yeah, I love that. You know what? I, can we just really quick turn back the hands of time and talk about how we met? Because it's been such, I mean, I think for both of us, like we met at the airport, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, I, I mean, tell me the story of that day because that was okay. the first time. I know you were going through it. I was, girl. It was Delta. I forget what flight it was. I was going to Senegal. And mind you, this this Senegal trip was, was, was so important because I think I, I forgot where I was working with, but I literally had like 17 day vacations, right? Like it was never like a month or anything like that. So I had a very right. limited time to go back home. And this trip in particular, I, I hadn't gone back home for 10 years. It was oh, me. I did not know that part. Yes. I was so eager and so desperate to go back home. I get to the airport. It was me, my cousin, and my friend that I actually met on set. I'm a makeup artist as well. Um, she joined the trip and then we get there and the fight just didn't show up. So the flight was delayed for, I think, 17 hours. Um, and by the time I got to Jaleesa in this Mac, you know, counter, so lovely, so lovely, <laughs> the energy spirit that I needed. I'm like, listen, I just need some face wipes or something to wash my face because I've been like sitting in my makeup, even though I don't know why I was traveling with makeup on. And Jaleesa came, she gave me like the whole thing. I sat down, we, we couldn't go anywhere. So I sat down, we were talking about makeup for, I guess, an hour. And then we never left each other since that day. <laughs> that is so crazy. And then I think it developed since then. Like we, we saw each other at all the makeup shows. Oh. And the, um, what's the other one? There's a makeup I'm show. At. What's the other one? IMAX. Yes, IMAX. So oh my gosh. The, the industry was so pure then. It was so, so it was about <laughs> artistry. <laughs> Yeah, it was like you could literally go there and Pat McGrath would be just walking around. People just be shopping casually. Oh yeah, I need this for my kid, <laughs> that for my kid. And everybody was chill. It was yeah. so chill. But that's that's the beauty of, I think about of New York. You just never know who you would meet. And and it's obviously like it's just not only about meeting people, but I get to to experience and watch your journey. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God, like this girl, like I met her in the airport and now she's doing this. And you know what I mean? So it's just like amazing because I've watched your transformation. Like you've been a temp to, yeah. you were always about skin. Because I remember you were like, girl, we need to get the skin right. Can you please come into the office? Um, and then to L'Oreal. Yeah. And, and to Glossier. So, and I, and I believe that, you know, a lot of people know parts of your story, but can you tell me how all of those experiences brought you to this point? Because each of those brands are very, very different. You know what I mean? Uh, and, but the, there's one thing that stays true with you and who you are. So how, how was the, all of those experiences, like a combination of what, who you are and, and, and what Amicola is, is today? Oh, I love that question. Um, I think it all starts with you, right? I think for me, especially being first generation Harlem girl, deeper complexion, you know, never really seeing myself um, not, not only just represented, but celebrated. It's one thing to be a part of the story, but to be celebrated actively was always a void. So for me, you know, especially having very prideful parents from Senegal, they were always like, don't forget where you come from. This and that, like we barely spoke English in my home and to this day, well off is it, um, you know, the culture was very, very thick on me. So 
I think going into these spaces, my goal always was to, to create spaces for us. So whenever there was an opportunity to bring in a makeup artist, um, a photographer, um, a model, I was always looking under the counter, looking everywhere in the blocks, you know, like people that I, I remember from way back in the day looking for people to bring to the table because we deserve to be celebrated. And it was only um, for me, I'm, I'm very much a builder and a fixer. So for me, I'm like, okay, well, since I'm here and I have the quote unquote power to do so, how do I bring the, the right people to the table? So I remember that day when we were at Tim two, we were going over, you know, and they were really good with um, complexion and they really, yeah. um, they believed, you know, they, they're very particular about the, you know, the, the pigment loads and like which, right. you, which mix to do, you can mix it yourself. Um, right. Like how to get the perfect one. So when we were transitioning from, you know, pro uh, makeup artistry to the, the pods, which is more consumer based, we wanted to make sure that we had the right mixes for those pods um, to sell to the, to the consumers. Um, so I thought of you and um, um, that carried true for every step of the, of the way. So when I was at L'Oreal doing social media marketing, I was always looking for people like Sira Kante, who was, you know, a beautiful Ghanaian, uh, sorry, Guinean, um, um, uh, just beauty. And I'm like, I need to find her. We need to get her casted for this campaign. We're flying her out to LA. Play because people need to understand that um, you know black is beautiful number one and and black beauty is not monolithic there's so many different versions of it um, okay. you know going to Trinidad going to Ghana going to South Africa you all know that there's so many different versions of brown that we need to celebrate um, so when I finally got to Glossier um, I think L'Oreal taught me more about how to put the marketing cap on put the data centric idea on it and how to put numbers behind the vision because you know when it comes to business it's, it's just that you have to be able right. to have the art the vision but also to have something to be able to scaffold it and, and, and pour energy into it to make sure that it's able to thrive um, at Glossier I think the the most impactful lesson there was how important community was um, no matter what anyone says like the Glossier community is a diehard community um, being able to put resources behind listening and being able to, to at, a, at a brand level, um, be able to scale those one-to-one -one relationships was so, so important. So I think throughout all of that journey, I sat down and I still was like, mm, something's still missing, a little, little spice, a right. little flavor. Right. You know what I mean? How, how do we bring it home? Sauce. <laughs> the juice. Come on. <laughs> okay. well, good, good. So how do we bring this home? And eventually, you know, Amikole came to life, which was always a dream of mine since Temp2 2014. Um, and, you know, a brand name after my mother, um, who again was my first touch point into beauty, having this, this salon here in Harlem, um, where I grew up basically all my life. So it's been a long, long journey and it wasn't always a, a, a seamless one. It was a very zigzaggy one, especially last right. year being a, one of the most challenging years for a lot of people. Um, but here we are. Right. No, I love that. And I, I mean, I'm going to go back real quick. I love how you just briefly touch on your mom's salon, but that's so, I'm sure that was so, you know, instrumental in, in your introduction into beauty. This is, this is every day that you're seeing this, like it's been over 20 years now. Right. And 30, now. 30, 30 years. And it's like, that is iconic, like braiding Harlem, like the, that authentic experience, you cannot you cannot replicate that at all. <laughs> and I think you so, can feel it too. Go ahead. No, absolutely. No, I was going to say like, so when you were growing up, did your mom like play with makeup as well? Was it like mostly about hair and making sure your skin wasn't dry, yeah. making sure you got your shea butter? Yeah. That's so funny because I, I don't remember a particular thing that my mom did. She just had an aura of her that was just like, beauty is life. Like, if you walked outside ashy, if you walked outside not presentable, like, you were rude. Like, you were just rude. Like, who raised you? So, right. <laughs> very clandestine about her beauty rituals. And it was very, like, um, very one-to-one -to, -one to her. Like, it was very singular to her. So she would just, like, walk in a room and come back out and ba-boom, like a whole different person. Um, right. But I think for me, in terms of our, my beauty relationships and, like, understanding beauty in a context of women and people, it's a lot of it being at the salon. And that meant right. beauty of everything. That meant beauty of swag when baggy clothes was a thing that means you know the drips of the hair like what kind of hairstyle the Senegalese twist the micro braids the, the long box braids like all of that um even down to the music Mary J Blige blasting downstairs it was like a little jukebox of like bar downstairs every Friday Saturday you know would be busy days for my parents I'd just be in the window like listen to all the jams and all the right. all the all the music coming out Brandy Moesha all the things so 
for me, it was just a beautiful melting pot that I didn't realize and, and I didn't appreciate as much as, until you grow up and out of it. Um, but that was the safe haven. You know how it is when you get your hair done, you come in, your hair a little scrappy, a little, you know, a little crazy. Take off that hat, you know, you're just an area of trust, like this little judgment free zone. <laughs> Listen, once your hair is laid, I swear that's that's all you need. You just need some hair, your brows, a little gloss, a little glow, and you're good. Literally. That is literally so imagine so being surrounded by that for for 30 years you know what I mean people coming in and out and just like leaving with such drip and swag and confidence it was just different yeah I love that um and I mean your mom is an icon but I want to talk about shade range and inclusivity you know I know that we touched on it briefly you know throughout temp two and like working in you know development with Glossier um to me I, I always say if your brand is not inclusive bird box I cannot I don't even see your brand I would never put it in my kit I just I don't see you but I think you know what is so amazing about your product is that it's so diverse it's so it can stretch you know obviously I've played with it for quite some time now but can we talk a little bit more about you know what shade range and inclusivity means because I think that it's I think it's kind of becoming like these words that people love to say but I'm just like, what are you actually doing? You know what I mean? Like, what are you actually doing to be inclusive, to have a proper shade range? It doesn't mean 50 shades of gray. It means 50 yeah. shades or even <laughs> less. Maybe it's 40, maybe it's 10, maybe it's five, but yeah. it's shades that can work. You know what I mean? So I just want to, I would love to hear your opinion on that. Oh, I have so many thoughts on that, especially again, being a deeper skin tone. I like not to detract from your your your, your question, but I, I felt so deeply in love with skin and skincare because for a long time, it just, I just was not seen, was not a part of the conversation. Um, so I pivoted into skincare so heavily and then came back into makeup and beauty when I realized I can do it my damn self. <laughs> um, exactly. But when it comes to shade and inclusivity, I think that's, to your point in terms of industry standard, it's definitely have become these marketing jargons and terms though around um, especially, you know, as we say in the post Fenty era, you know, it took a lot of convincing prior to that we deserve to have not only the, the shade selections, because let's be real, the range did exist, but there was no marketing behind it or there was not enough education behind it um, to reach the people that you say deserve X, Y, Z. Um, so for me, I, I knew how important it was to listen. I think a lot of times we as human beings, even as marketers, we forget the, the step one, which is to ask the question, um, to get that feedback, to have that loop, to sit down with it and create a real point of view. I think it's very easy actually to create a hundred shades, especially if you have funding, right? But to edit right. down and be able to be very precise and intentional about how you approach shade and undertones and complexion and, and, and coverage, all of that has been, um, the biggest task and hurdle, especially developing this line, um, but I knew it would be worth it. So it took three years to get the, the complexions right. Um, you know, number one, asking people on, on Instagram, like almost 400 people and, and some, sometimes even more, um, like, what are you using? Like, how does it work for you? What would you change about it? Right. Um, and from there, from there being able to pivot. Um, and then once we got like, a concept of what we want, we had a huge heat map and we knew exactly what people wanted and what shades they were looking for and what was kind of missing from their, their makeup bag. Um, and once we got those, those shades down, we came to people like yourself, makeup artists saying, hey, Jaleesa, does this look right? We sat down, we, we pin marked. I got my little bowl, my little sample in yes. the thing. <laughs> I'm like, I'm using it all out. <laughs> you know, I, I have my makeup artist friends that I've met along the way at the IMATS, you know, and all the things at the MAC counter, et cetera to be like, hey, I wanna to talk to real people. What are the real people using? What are they returning when they buy these things? And like, how do we make it even better? Um, so after we went through the, the makeup artist route, we went back to our, our chemist to be like, hey, we know this, we know that, we know that the undertones are always, you know, tend to skew red. How do we create a line that's really inclusive of not only just um, depth, but also in, in undertones? So for us, you know, quality really was way more important than quantity. Um, and I I think we work, we'll continue that that ethos, you know, moving forward, being able to give um, the best we can and, and as as edited of a selection as possible. Um, in terms of inclusivity in, in, in the in the market, I think 
I look at it way bigger. I think there are some brands that talk to everyone and we're not, the, we're not that brand. And when we're okay with that, because for a very long time, we have not been included in the storytelling. We have not been included in the marketing campaigns and um, those, you know, very authentic to your, to your point earlier, um, storytelling. So we're bringing that inclusive, you know, chip um, to the table to say, hey, actually we're here as well. Um, and hopefully we'll help the industry be a, a, a kind of real well-rounded and well, you know, bellied um, industry. Um, but we, we know very well that we're, we're talking to those melon rich beauties that have for a very long time been in the peripheral of storytelling versus the focus. Right. Wow. No, I love that. And I, I think that this is really just the beginning of Amicole, like the beginning of the story that you're going to tell. Um, and I think it's going to just get better. Um, I do want to, um, I think this comes up a lot because, you know, I have a lot of conversations with a lot of brand owners and people that are trying to build their business. Um, and Funding is a, a big a thing that comes up a lot. Yeah. It's very hard. Um, you know, Black women do not get funded. Um, and, uh, you know, it was quite a journey for you. Mm -hmm. Can you just share a little bit more about how you got funded? Yeah. You know, I know you bootstrapped a lot. You shared your journey on Instagram. You, you, we were really immersed into <laughs> everything that was going on. Like, I felt like, I mean, I, if, you know, if I didn't know you, I would still feel like, oh my God, like you're my sister. Like I need her to win. You know what I mean? Yeah, so awesome. can you that share is. more about that? Huh? I love that so much. Um, but yeah, the, the, just the overall just connection and it's just amazing. But fundraising was hard. And honestly, I think that gave me more anxiety than starting the idea itself, you know, because I, especially as women, if we're talking stats, like, you know, women in general, I think are, are funded 2% of, of, of total VC funding. These numbers have changed a bit in the past two years when people quite literally opened their eyes and especially after Black Lives Matter and there's been a, a few more people answering their emails and answering those phone calls. But before that, 2%. Um, and after that, I think, I mean, I think 0.06% of that was was Black women, not to mention a Black woman solo founder. Right? We're not even talking about the nitty gritties of just being a solo founder um, versus having, you know, a, a, a co-founder or, you know, a, a, a Wall Street guy, you know, coming to, to the <laughs> back up your idea, yes, to make yeah. it real. Um, so for me as a solo founder, I, I did have to work twice as hard and get be prepared with um, numbers and opportunities, but it's so hard and so systematic how hard it is. Let me tell you why, because when you talk about the total addressable market and all of these details and stats, you know, some stats when it comes to the general market, quote unquote, like you would just Google it and find it. Even stats yeah. about how black people consume things you can't find. So imagine trying to make a case for why you should exist based on numbers and you can't even find those numbers because those institutions that make those numbers don't even see you. Right. <laughs> they don't even see you. So for me, it was very much, um, very much, uh, it, it's a game, um, but I think it's a very tough game. And, and, and throughout the process of it, you realize even more why your brand should exist. Um, why, you know, coming to the, to the, to the table um, compared to like a white male counterpart or bro, like I had to come to the table with samples already done. I knew who I wanted to hire. I knew um, what the three products I wanted to launch with. I knew which channels. I, knew, I had to know so much already to bring to the table saying, listen, I think of your money as energy. Like I'm not thinking of your money as owning this brand or this company or this movement, but I need energy in order to produce this thing, this movement, quite frankly. So for me, I had to change my mindset because I'm, again, first generation. I'm like, don't ask nobody for money. You could do it yourself. Right. Da -da 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 -da, all these I, things. I was so nervous to even ask for money. So I had to change even my mindset about this is not money, this is energy. Um, right. And then, I mean, again, like you go through the works. It took me about I started in March. I closed in July. I don't even know how many months that is, but it was a, it was a long time. Um, and, you know, people always say like, why don't you bootstrap it? Why don't you start with friends and family? Like I did bootstrap at the beginning of it. You know what I mean? Like, I love how these friends and family are all just have a million dollars. We're friends, just, we're friends and we're family. You know. Exactly. Because <laughs> I know my uncles that are driving taxis and my uncles that are working in the restaurants and, and working those like graveyard shifts, they 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 admire my ambition, but they're not cutting me a, a $5,000 to $10,000 check when there's people back home that need to eat. So right. for me, it's a a lot of you know knocking on door, doors going back to those people that I've met along the journey um former bosses um former you know mentors or advisors or people that I know in the industry who understood the the the, the project at hand 
who I had to go to. And then after a while, after 150, you know, emails, phone calls, Zoom calls, um, a, a solid 13 people said yes. And then we made it, we made it happen. <laughs> wow. Wow. That is amazing. Um, 13, I mean. <laughs> yes. After 150, and I'm, I'm I'm being gracious with that number. That's just the that's just the Excel that I have of the people that I contacted. But I'm pretty sure you know the people that you know just call you. I'm like, oh, you should talk to this person, right. and you can't say no. Right. It becomes a full time job, um, right. and it's so funny because you're asking for like millions of dollars, and at that time I was on unemployment. I didn't have any money. I didn't have any source of anything. Um, you know, I was going through the pandemic just as everybody else was. You know, just got laid off at the at the start of COVID, and not sure what was going to happen. Um, so it was a very complex, different world that I was living in, um, especially being, you know, experienced COVID. <laughs> you know, it happened to right. us. It happened to a lot of people in Harlem. It happened to my family members. Um, everything just hit so close to home. And I think at that at that phase of life or that stage, I was just so eager to get out and like above this kind of turmoil that I had to do it. I had no choice. Wow. Oh, I have chills. Like, I mean, I know your story, but it's just like you, you see, I, I just think you see the highlight reel so many times yes. and you don't necessarily see, you know, the, the struggles. It's mm. like funding you have, I, I mean, remember everything with your dad and like, you know, you're telling me like, I didn't even know you had COVID. Like all of this is like, you are literally trying to build this empire, but you have, you're in a whirlwind of everything else going on. It was some you know? dark times. It was some dark times, especially, you know, with my dad, you know, being, you know, sick for four months with COVID, not really knowing the certainties of it. And I'm not trying to be grim or something, but you're like, you know, you're talking to lawyers and, and talking to doctors at the same time, <laughs> trying to build something. So yeah, like even when I got COVID, it was December. And I remember like, you know, our samples were due. So I literally had to save all my energy for the end of the day so I could be on the same time frame as China. So I could get up, answer the emails, print it out, look at all the, the proofs, sign it and send it over them with COVID and then go back to bed. <laughs> right. um, but, and that's what, that's what makes me so nervous about Instagram. Because especially right now, after you kind of get your flowers, quote unquote, and, and you know, with all the success the launch people don't really understand the brick by brick motions and i'm blessed to have some people like yourself who has been along with me for the journey but you know when you fast forward it becomes very dangerous because you don't get to see the struggle um and i'm not right. saying everybody has to struggle i think that you know right. god definitely you know writes everyone's story differently but it's very dangerous when we only think of the, the positive because i've been we've been through it we've definitely been through it mm -hmm. right wow um whew. so let me ask you though like I know, I just want to ask this really quick. How did you cope? Because I know that it, it's, a, it's a lot. Like, what did you do? Because I, I, I was looking at every story, mm -hmm. you know, you would sit down, you would, but there was a lot happening behind the scenes. Like, mm -hmm. did you meditate more? Did you just like, how did you cope during that time? Because you're dealing with, you know, COVID, your parents, building this brand, still having, you know, you know, you know, whatever happened with the last job, like all of these things going on and, that's a lot. That's a lot. And I would be lying to you if I said I, I knew one way, because I think for me, I've always been like that. And I think you have to be as a, as a, as a leader of a company and a, and a brand new, you're kind of like this, this, this optimistic, you know what I mean? I just know that yeah. for me, I'm very spiritual. And I know that when things are feeling very broken, that something beautiful is about to happen. And I just kept holding on to that idea. And like every day when I kept waking up and it wasn't getting like, you know, worse per se, or it was, I didn't feel like I like did, did, did almost like I couldn't move by it. I, I just kept trying to move through it. Um, I think my friends, I could not say this enough, but my, my circle of friends, which I am so grateful that throughout the years that I've been making it smaller and smaller and more like quality versus quantity. Um, so being able to pick up the phone and call you or call my girlfriends in LA, call my husband now, um, and just talk and, and be present with somebody was very important. Um, and I think this whole thing brought me very close to my mom um, because it was literally just me and my mom when my when my my dad was um, you know away. So you know building Amicole was was also a gift to her. Um, right. So for me, I don't know those small little lights just kept making me happy. I remember one day I was so I don't want to say depressed, but I was so down. But I woke up 
and I heard birds chirp, chirping. I'm like, you know what? I made it to another day. <laughs> so maybe today is a new time to try things out or maybe today is a new day. And like, no matter what happens, life does go on. And that little moment, I don't know what it was. I think it was Ramadan and we woke up to eat and the birds were chirping. I'm like, wow, like no matter what happens, the birds are going to chirp. So, <laughs> <laughs> so oh those goodness. small moments always keep me going. And I, and I, and I pray that those, those moments continue to build and, and add momentum to, the, to my whole journey. Oh my gosh. You, I'm like, <laughs> I'll try not don't to, cry. Like, I don't want to be snappy on here. I'm just giving you, <laughs> oh I'm giving you the real because you're my friend and you've been there and, and you've been on the opposite side of the phone and, 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 and to those listening as well, you know, check on your strong friend, you know, check on the person yep. that you know is, is, is going, you know, even if, if you quote unquote thriving or going through all these things and, and like so many things to, to succeed and like um, celebrate, you know, a lot of my friends like saying like, hey, I know it's a lot for you to be out here right now. I hope you're just checking on yourself. You don't even have to respond to the, the text. I'm just right. letting you know that I'm sending, sending you energy your way. And that's um, is really important. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's, that's why I feel it differently. You know, I just, and like, before I move on to my next question, I feel like I, I have to say this. I have to publicly thank you for making me the makeup artist for your, your <laughs> campaign. Yeah. I am so grateful. I'm going to not cry because oh. you guys know I'm like, <laughs> cry in public. I don't do that. But like, oh my God, like we literally had this conversation where it's like, we are in this industry where we're fighting for people to see us mm. where we're doing the work where we're I mean we have we doing exactly what other people are doing but it's like we just don't get there like you had to come ready with your products you had to be you had all these things you mm. you you just have to do so much more and like you 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 know me you know what I mean like you know what I love to do and you're like no you're you're gonna do this makeup and like right. just seeing these photos like I literally cry when I saw the the image of um Umi and um Asha and I was just like oh my god like this is the this is a vision like this is what we work hard for yeah. and I just want to just I just need to thank you, you for even that need because... to thank you because you know what you did that you did that from day one I knew that you knew what you were talking talking about that you have the expertise and above all you had the patience because you knew your craft and I think Jaleesa and people like yourselves especially artists who it's so easy to give up when you get like so many doors slammed or you know you're stuck in that assistant role or you're, you're constantly having to like lug your kit all over freaking the nation to prove yourself and I know when you get the tools or the opportunity that you will knock it out the park and I feel like with this brand launch, that's exactly what happened. You came to the story and you came and you, you did skin like we haven't seen it done, period, period. Akeem um, Snow came and shot and lit black skin like we've never seen it before, period. The, the set, the casting, all the people that were there were so intentional. Umi is from Harlem. You know, Shauna is from the coach store on Fifth Avenue that I used to frequent all the time. You know, Mariah right. is someone that we saw on Instagram. Bintu is someone from Senegal who's also been in the model industry, you know, trying to get that look. So I think a lot of us, even people on the team, have for a very long time been those underdogs that were like just waiting for the opportunity to snap. And it, and it happened. And when I see all the press hits and I see all the commentaries, I'm like, do you know the, the, the machine that went behind it? And do you know the messaging behind it? I always think about that yeah. Beyonce moment for Coachella. People are always like, I don't know where to find black talent. Like, where, where can I find a, a, where can I possibly find like a black guitarist who knows how to do this range and that range? And Beyonce right. was like, let me show you where to find them. Cause I will go to Cote d'Ivoire right. if I need to, but they exist. Right. And when they do exist, right. There's a magic that happens, and that Netflix special in those moments in our in this this culture in this time frame shows us that when we have the opportunity, we will deliver. Oh my God! <laughs> it's just that simple. <laughs> it really is that simple. So how many times have we had to be humble and like quiet and like you know, hey, I have an idea, or you know, hey, have we tried this? But yeah, I was just going back to your point earlier. I think it's just like when we do have the opportunity and that means funding, that means in jobs, that means, um, you know, being the, the lead makeup artist, um, the, the lead model, you know, it's important to show that we can do it if we just have the opportunity. I mean, I wish I was just like drop drops mic, period, literally. 
Um, whew, all right, so I got that out. Wusa, okay, Wusa. <laughs> um, okay, so I want to talk about this inspiration wall that you have here. And I also want to get into the actual products and the inspiration behind each one because they're essential. They're the trinity. You need all of them. You know what I mean? So let's talk about the wall first because, I mean... I'm look at her. <laughs> um, so number one, my team knows this too. I'm such a visual person. I needed to be able to like create something to 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 make it make sense. Right. So me, I mean, when I started the brand and I literally was in my apartment trying to figure things out, this was the first thing I think, I think this was the first thing I did um, was just trying to figure out like, what is, is it a tube? Like, what is it? Is it a glossy brown, you know, rays or what, like what's going to actually like look like? So, you know, I'm a big manifester. So I'm like, let me start here and work backwards. Right. Um, and, and, and the idea, real. <laughs> it's so real. <laughs> um, and the idea of the brand as well, that really moved me. And I feel like a lot of, especially black beauty brands or multicultural brands, um, there is a little bit of hardness to it. And the hardness is not a bad thing, but it's like fierce, it's strong, it's all these things. But I'm like, you know, there's also some softness to us that we don't get to celebrate too often or see. Um, so seeing Black beauty and laughter, seeing Black beauty, like being joyous and having that soft armor, like us just existing, like, you know, the classic example is your mom, right? Like your mom is someone who is so nurturing and so soft to you, but will get you sh in the shape. <laughs> um, so that's in two seconds, okay? So for me, soft armor is something that really always, you know, resonated with me. Um, here's a picture of Fela's, um, one of Fela's wives, you know, very joyous and like celebratory through music and just love and, and, and very ample of it. Um, this is something I met, I saw on Instagram, I'm not too sure when, but something about her eyes and just the, the reflection in that and the capture there really had me inspired. Um, she, you know, she might be West African, maybe from Senegal, but features just so striking. Um, you know, movement and just seeing, you know, how this matches with, um, you know, benchmarks and like, you know, shades that I like and the richness of it. And all of these are campaign shots that we shot from the day of. So I had to replace my old ones with the, with the existing ones. Right. Um, and, you know, the team, you know, the day, the day of the shoot after that, like that moment was just so beautiful. Um, so whenever I come to work, you know, quote unquote, even though we're working from home, <laughs> I'm always surrounded by this and always, um, just reinvigorated by the start of it all. Right. Um, because it's been a journey. <laughs> right. Right. Um, I, I mean, I'm here for it. Um, and I, I really, um, so just floored by how, I mean, I already know that this brand is going to do amazing things and this is just the beginning and I'm floored at how. I mean, I mean, I knew it would be, but I was floored at how well the launch went. Like a lot of people are talking. All my friends are like, oh my God, I need the gloss. I saw that you post recently that somebody already finished their, their gloss. So <laughs> let's go through everything. So we have the skin enhancing tint. Um, yeah. And uh, this is, feels like butter. But can you tell us more about this particular, particular product? And I'm just going to. Absolutely. I always, I always, I, I, I kind of refer it to like the sheer stockings of, of, of makeup. Like, you know, you don't know if you have it on or not. It just magically blends into your skin. Um, this is always designed for the girl. This is the everyday makeup that you can wear either for Zoom, um, going out on a date with your boyfriend, you know, brunch night with your girls, um, et cetera. But for us, the formula was really important for it to be breathable, clean and lightweight. Um, and by clean, we really want to focus on non-toxic ingredients that are not really interrupting our endocrine systems like phthalates and parabens. I know the clean, you know, world is so wonky, but right. for us, it, it really is important to, to, to be careful what we're ingesting and putting onto us. Um, so yes, we enriched all of our formula, formulas with baobab seed extract and oils, um, a, a very rich and in, in nutrient dense um, ingredient from Senegal. Um, but it's, it's, it's native to Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, what else can I tell you about it? The formula is super stretchy. So a lot of people are like, oh, what shade should I get? But you'd be surprised that, you know, deep one and deep two might work right. for you if you're a deep rich tone. But I think the way to navigate that is really to focus on the undertones. Right. Um, so if you're a bit more like redder and, 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 you know, yellow, you can kind of pick that on, on the website. Right. Uh, we knew that this will be important for our girl too, who's looking for the My Skin But Better look. Mm -hmm. um, because 
you know, like foundations, it was very rare to see a skin tint for us, you know, literally. Mm -hmm. I think NARS was the best seller at the time in Laura Mercier and it stopped at like 10. Um, so I knew that I was looking for that solution and always hacking it with like, you know, using only a concealer um, and using face oil or like trying to cut my foundation with the, with the moisturizer or oil um, to get that dewy, bouncy look. Um, one last thing about that. A lot of people are asking with people with oily skin types, if you can use it, right. I have oily, I have oily skin and I've been testing this baby like through, you know, Las Vegas weather, uh, Senegal weather under the sun. And it definitely doesn't, you know, produce more oil than like your average oil, you know, skin type, you right. know? So I would say it works for all skin types and we love her. <laughs> all right. And next we have the light catching highlighter. Now, this is my new one. I don't even want to, I don't even want to use it. It's just so beautiful. Uh, Did you crack her open? It's like, ooh, do I save her? <laughs> She's too um, yes, eye-catching highlighter. So we knew that we wanted like a, a, a dewy, glazy, donutty look, um, but we didn't want something too heavy like a pomade or a balm. Mm -hmm. So we put like a, this little highlighter stick that is, a, is made to literally help you see yourself so when you put it on you literally have to find the light and, and apply it to the skin um so you can catch the light and see reflect off the off the light or sun um she's very subtle she's she's one shade um you have you see these little small you know um metallic moments that's not irritating at all um just to give you that glaze and it's funny because i always say like when you wear this product, you really got to like feel yourself. You got to see yourself in the mirror. Right. You got to spend you gotta let, time. Let the light hit. <laughs> <I'm gonna catch laughs> <it. laughs> yeah, it's like a little selfie moment that you catch like in the sun, like during the sunset. So we love her. <laughs> and last but not least, our lip not treatment oil. Oil, yes. Our delectable lip treatment oil. Um, she's a thick treatment. Okay, she's giving you a, an effect of a gloss. Um, but the benefits of a skincare treatment um, with passion fruit uh, oil, Camilla oil, Bob up oil, she sits on the lips, she's thick, but she's not sticky. So she's giving you old school Mac vibes without the stickiness to it. Um, she lasts on the lips and really takes care of your lips while you wear it. Um, one of our best sellers so far, as you, as you mentioned earlier, people are already running out of it. So I'm like, damn, we should probably made a bigger one. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, yeah, she's super beautiful. Um, one universal shade, very neutral on the warm taupey side. Um, and also uh, one last thing that I forgot to mention, um, I forgot, but we love her. <laughs> yeah. No, she's cute. She's cute. Um, oh my gosh. This was amazing. Now I want to do something a little fun. We're going to do a little speed around. I mean, okay. I kind of know some of these answers, but I want everyone to know <laughs> the real Jada, everything that, you know, some fun things. All right. So, and I love that you say my name so right all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, because no, I, I mean, I know we've known each other for a long time, but I said it wrong for so long in my mind. And then when I heard it, I was like, all right, bet. Because I get called Jalicia, Jalessa. And I'm like, babes, it's too easy. It's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> Jalisa, okay? It's not that hard. Um, we're going to put respect on everyone's name, uh, 2021, all right? All right, so best jalof. Oh, come on. That's what I'm saying, girl. Oh. We made jalof. Jalof <laughs> is jalof. You think? Okay, okay. okay. Next question. All right, next question. Your be the best way to relax. Ooh, the best way to relax. Um, for me recently is being with my hubby doing nothing on the couch. Oh, I love that. One place you would love to visit. Ooh, one place I would love to visit. Oh, it's so hard. You know, I love to travel girl. Um, I already been to Trinidad. Oh, we're going to go <laughs> back say. by the way, when we're going to go back in a few years when things are a little bit better oh, yeah. for carnival. Oh, I'm coming. Oh, I'm coming. <laughs> um, I, I want to go to Kenya. I want to go to Kenya. I want to see how vast and flat the land is. Like I, I'm always enamored by how beautiful it looks online. But I want to go. <laughs> mm, I love that. One makeup trend that needs to go away forever. Oh, forever? Okay. <laughs> oh, this one is a little spicy. You know what? I think the lashes are getting a little crazy <laughs> these days. The lashes are getting a little crazy these days. I've been out in these streets these days and I'm looking, I'm like, wow, this is like a, this is a different 3D <laughs> mink situation. 
what's going on? Girl, I'm far away. <laughs> oh, God, that is so funny. All right, favorite scent. Ooh, my favorite scent is Fig and Neroli. Mm. Any particular brand? Ooh, okay. So there's one that is called La Parfumé Artisienne. Mm -hmm. It's a French brand. And um, I think the name of it is called Lyriberis or something like Lyri I'll I'll put it in the description, but I forgot what it was. But it's a beautiful, um, warm, musty a fig but I like when musk meets with citrus a little bit right um so you know who else is a good job with this the wood sage one by um by Joe Malone I love that one yes. too um I'm a dark oody girl so I, I loved your um poison which is like old school right. <laughs> um hypnotic poison and then my last one that I love love but it discontinued, so I have an attitude, is the Jean-Paul Gaultier number two. Mm -hmm. I, I found it in Paris back in like 2000, I think 10, and I've never found it again. Oh, Paris is always clutch for finding things. Um, Ooh. But last one, drink of choice. Ah, uh, drink of choice, girl. Okay. <laughs> like all of them, all of them. <laughs> all of them, let me get, let me get a... <laughs> <laughs> let me get a oh that's hard Julissa you know what anything it could be a tea it could be a, okay. it, it could be anything it doesn't have to be like a drink drink okay well uh, to that point I'm gonna say bui which is basically baobab juice it's so good mm -hmm. okay if anyone's listening to this and they happen to be in in Harlem if you go to the Sen a Senegalese restaurant ask for bui it is a lactate like milky drink but it's it will change your life. <laughs> mm. Okay. Well, I definitely okay. need to, to do that. Mm -hmm. um, oh my gosh. That was so fun. Thank you <laughs> so much for being on the podcast. Um, and guys, if you're listening, you're going to see the review. Um, if you're visual like me, we're going to have a, um, a review on the products on my YouTube. Um, but Jada, you are a queen. I am just so proud of you. Thank you so Thank much you. for your time, your energy, everything. I appreciate Thank you for being you, like literally. <laughs> you were literally just like, and I don't, I don't even know how else to describe it. Even when it was like, oh, who's Julissa? I'm like, Julissa is just, and I just smile. Because <laughs> this is a person. And I appreciate you. And um, to both of us, it's just the beginning. You know, we're still, you know, pretty, pretty young, quote unquote, in the game. And we have a lot to do um, to leave the legacy behind, to open the doors for people to come. Um, so I'm excited. I'm rooting you on every moment too. So thank you for creating the space and opportunity 